When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he, was, he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the, I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello everyone. We are really thrilled to be with you today on More Than Conquerors. We've just been seeing the Lord do some wonderful things and we are so grateful and so thankful for he all. He only the, doeth wondrous things. He only doeth wondrous things, the goodness of God. And we are so thankful for that every day of our lives. You know, the real, um, I think the real key to happiness is that, um, you know, keeping a glad heart. A merry heart does good like a medicine. He that hath a glad heart, Proverbs says, hath a continual feast and being joyful and happy about the blessing of the Lord. Because even in Deuteronomy 28, Terry, it says if you, if you complain yeah. and you're critical about every single thing that's going on, it says, and you serve not the Lord with gladness of heart, you'll be in nakedness and in want of, I mean, you invite one, that was, the curse. Yeah, that was one of the curses. You invite the curse into your life when you're complaining, unthankful, all yeah, he, critical. He I said, mean, because you have not, have not been thankful, been thankful and joyful and serve the Lord with gladness of heart, for the abundance, abundance of all things. Some Another, people don't like prosperity and abundance, yeah. but God said, <laughs> because you didn't yeah. get excited right. for the abundance of all things, he said, now you're going to have nothing and be naked and be in want and have no food and no water and no clothes. And it, and it won't be because God did it. It'll be because you confessed it with your own mouth. Yeah, because you, you called got it in with curse, your yeah. words. Yeah. Well, it was just what you were talking about there on the last program about the children of Israel. They complained so much mm -hmm. that that God gave them what they lusted after yeah. that they left in Egypt. Yeah. And then when they got it, the wrath of God came on the whole thing because there wasn't a thankful person in the whole group. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't a thankful person in them. And it says even though he gave them quail and they ate it for 30 days or so. I mean, no, it says while it was still in their mouth. mouth. So before they even chewed it, <laughs> they just had put it in their mouth. mouth God Numbers, just said, Numbers 11, you read that. Terry read that in the last program. I mean, it's in fact, like we the need Lord to make said, a correction. We need to make a correction because the last program we were talking about how much quail God gave them. Yeah, tell them. And it, it, it was three feet deep, a, yeah. a day's walk that way, a day's walk that way, three feet deep, two days walking. Yeah. And it said the guy that gathered the least, least. amount gathered 10 homers and uh and so we looked up a homer and, and i and I, term. I gave a uh the, the the first definition i was given as it was a five gallon bucket of the homer uh but then uh, they double checked it my fact checkers fact, fact checked it and uh <laughs> and they said it was uh what 30 38 gallon uh what what five fifty 
gallons. Now I'm reading sign language. So fifty <laughs> one a, homer is fifty gallons dry weight. Right. Uh, and if you packed it into the back end of a pickup truck, it'd be mounded over. It'd be five hundred and something pounds of meat. Yeah, that was the least. Nineteen hundred birds. Nineteen hundred birds. That's the guy that did the least amount. That's I amazing. told you that's a lot of quail. That's a lot of God quail. does not have a supply shortage. He does not. God on does anything. not have an abundance on problem. On anything. God's got plenty. As I've said to you all the years you've known me, yes, God's, God's got, got lots, lots of, money, of money and, and he, he shares, shares it with, with us. us. <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, that's Terry's answer for everything. Uh, a brief commercial here from the Word of God on some of these things that God's always had an attitude of abundance. <laughs> Absolutely. Of everything that he done from the moment he started creating this planet. To the very moment that he that we leave this place, and he makes a new heaven and a new earth, he says of those of us that'll be in the family, a, a number that no man can number. That's that's people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's people. It's but a lot of I, folks. But then I was looking at Deuteronomy chapter six, Terry. It says, when the Lord brings you into the land which he swore to bring your fathers, and it says he's going to give you houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant. He's going to, You're going to eat and be satisfied. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it says, and when the Lord your God brings you into this plant, plant he's, good, he's going to give you goodly cities that you didn't build. He says, I'm, he's going to bring you out of the land of bondage. Oh, well, absolutely. bondage was lack. Bondage was, in Egypt, was not doing enough. With, doing without. It was doing without and not having enough. And being on the under the barrel, not even even with the barrel, much less on top of the barrel. Well, God's never had a supply shortage. He's never had a problem no. with abundance. No. You know how many times you heard me preach the story about about the the, the widow woman uh, that just had a little meal and a little oil, and her yeah. she was going to eat, make two cakes, and her and her son were going to die. The prophet came down. He said, "Make me a cake first. You, with God, you always give to God first. With with uh, with a farmer, you always plant first. You put the seed That's in right. the field first, That's right. and uh, and then you get a harvest. And so she did that. She made him a cake. So the Bible says he moved in with her. Yeah, lived with her for a whole year. Right. Okay. And King James says for a season or for a time, but the margin right. says for a whole year. So if you so you you've heard me say before that if he stayed with her a year and she made three cakes for breakfast, mm. three cakes for lunch, the prophet or son herself, right. and right. three cakes for supper for three hundred and sixty five days, that's that's nine cakes a day for three hundred and sixty five days. That's three thousand two hundred and eighty five cakes. That's a bunch. out of a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. And she thought she only had enough for two. God has abundance. Always. Then, in the then room. the the uh, when God gave them manna in the desert, I figured this up years and years ago. I, I, I figured this up and preached it in my living in my living to give series uh, many many years ago. Uh, that that the manna for at least two million Jews, two to three million Jews, was like four thousand four hundred tons of manna a day. Wow. 4,000, 4, 500 tons of manna wow. a day. A day. A day. A day. <laughs> and if that's you do that over 40 all, years, day, 40 if you do years. that over 40 years, that's 14,600 days. And if you do 14,600 days times 4,500 Tons, you end up with sixty-five million seven hundred tons wow. of manna, and they were saying, "Give me, give me, give me all at one time." It would have killed them. They'd have had sixty-five My million goodness. tons of manna dumped on their head, but he gave it to them daily. Daily, daily gave it to the widow daily. He's never had a supply problem. No, he he's not dealing with shortage. He 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 doesn't. You don't no. go to God's grocery store and there's no toilet paper on the shelves. You know, there's no there's no food on the shelves. No, it's abundance. Yeah, and he wants you to have abundance. Well, you know, you just look back at the prayer of Jesus that people call the, you know the Lord's prayer. Theologians have deemed the Lord's prayer. Give us our daily bread, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's but yet it's an abundant supply. It's mm -hmm. an unlimited supply. Mm -hmm. I was looking See, at I don't ha I don't have to have tomorrow's bread to sleep tonight. No, that's right. That's right. That's I can right. sleep tonight and trust in the Lord and trust the Lord for tomorrow's bread. That's right. Because he's that's got right. it. And he's going to supply it. Well, he's going to take care I, I of it. I was just looking at these scriptures that I've been using to believe God for some things you and I were trusting in the Lord for. Proverbs fourteen eleven says, the tent of the upright shall flourish. Well, you know, 
people that of all walks of life and every uh, conceivable denomination, they're the upright, people that trust in the Lord, sure, people that love sure, God. Sure. He says your tents should flourish, your house should flourish. Right. And then that there should be peace and prosperity within your walls. That's Psalms 122, verses six through seven. Then Isaiah 60, 18, it says, violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within your borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. I mean, God wants to come live in a place where there's abundance. Oh, absolutely. He wants to hang around your house where you're believing God, like it says there in Psalms, he delights in the prosperity of his servants. Yes, he does. God's not trying to put a lid on something. He's not trying to say, well, you can have this much, but you can't have any more than that. No, he wants an abundance. And then it just talks about here that's amazing to me, one of the scriptures that I have used, I mean, I've used these all my life to to believe in the impossible of what my bank account well, didn't sure. say I could well, sure. have, sure. but God said I could have it. Well, you have an account in heaven. Yeah. So we draw on that one. We, we need to know the teller at the bank of heaven. That's right. On a first name basis. That's so Just cool. like you do or used to here on earth. You knew your teller by the first name basis. You'd walk in there and they'd say, well, hello, Ms. Myers, how are you doing today? Yeah, right, you, you know, right. well, you need to know the teller at the bank of heaven that well. And when you walk in, they say, oh, did you come to deposit today or withdraw? <laughs> say, well, I need That's to get right. some money today. That's right. We can do both. We deposit and we withdraw. Right. But what's so cool is that, you know, Terry, we've talked about this a lot recently, is that, that about half of heaven has got to be accounting. Oh, of course. You know, because they're counting every time we say something about the Lord. They're counting our steps. They're ordering our steps. They're counting the very hairs on your head. They're counting I mean, the sparrows. They're counting, they're counting all the things about how you, the words that come out of your Mouth, well, what look you at say what we God? just talked about last week, and, and then even today we mentioned again all the quail God gave them. Oh my He goodness. gave them quail three foot deep, a day's journey that way, a day's journey that way. And the guy that gave the least amount gathered 500 and whatever gallons of it was a bunch of quail. <laughs> it was, I it's mean, a, everything about the kingdom of God. Those is angels had to account for all that. He's looking for ways to get stuff to us. He's not trying to keep things from us. Even when he was mad, he gave it to them. No, you know, right. even, even when they had offended God in every way conceivable, he still gave them what they wanted, right. you know, in that regard. It, and then Isaiah thirty two eighteen says, my people shall dwell in peaceful habit, habitation and safe dwellings in quiet places. And it says, uh, over here in Proverbs 3, that he declares blessings on the home of the just and the righteous, and then prosperity and welfare. This is Psalm 112, verse 3. This is this is a scripture that I heard preached many, many years ago, maybe 35, 40 years ago. It says, prosperity and welfare are in the house of the righteous, and it endures forever. I mean, everything about this, like Proverbs, I, I, there's so many here, but Proverbs 24 says that, you know, God's attitude is that through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a home, a life, a family going to all be built by understanding, you know, is are the foundations right. laid and by knowledge are all the chambers of its every area filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Well, if the God house, didn't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that. But, but he this thought is it his up. promise it was his that idea. he will. If you need things for your home, I found these scriptures as a very young woman. I mean, a wonderful woman of God set me down and showed me scriptures <laughs> that she had found on how to believe God for a house Absolutely. and how to believe God for stuff in the house. And I found these things and began to go after them. Absolutely. And I've seen God bring me all kinds of things. I mean, right down to a baby grand piano that I was believing God Absolutely. for, brand new, was given to me. You know, Renee, one thing we haven't talked about, we've been talking about now for what, eight weeks? Eight, I believe. Uh, we've been talking about living to give. And of course, I taught a series on living to give, and you can get a hold of that. You can download That's it. Right. You can get it from the office. It's wonderful. You can, uh, uh, it'll it'll change your life. It's a mindset of you're yeah. you're here to bless. I'm living to give. to give. I'm living to bless, to care, to share, to love, to minister, to embrace. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm here to be a blessing. And the one thing I haven't talked about, um, and and I'd like to get it in today before since this is our eighth program on it, uh, is is that Second Corinthians chapter eight and nine is where Paul is talking to the church at Corinth right. about their, their offerings. Mm -hmm. And he's not very happy. 
And uh, he's telling the church at Corinth about the church at Philippi. Right. Okay. So you got two churches. Right. You got one in you got one in in Achaia. Corinth is in the province of Achaia, like like you know Houston's a city in the state of Texas. Well, well, Corinth is a city in the province of Achaia, and Philippi was a, a city in the province of Macedonia. Right. Okay. So so when you look at Second Corinthians eight and nine, Paul's talking about Achaia and Macedonia. He's talking about two two provinces mm -hmm. in the cities within them, Corinth and. Philippi. And so he says to the church in, in at Corinth, he said, now, brethren, we do you, you to wit, or we want you to know of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. He's talking about the Philippians, talking to the Corinthians. Right. And he said, uh, how that in their great trial of affliction. All right. Now, they were afflicted and they were having some poverty right. problems. And he says, he says, now that church over there in Macedonia, in a great trial of affliction, they had the abundance of their joy. They were in an abundant joy and their deep poverty. They still abounded unto the riches of their liberality or their generosity. Right. All right. Then here's the, here's the phrase I wanted to get to. He says, he says in verse two, he says, for to their power, I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Well, so what's he saying? He's saying they were willing of themselves to their power. Of, in other words, what they had. What they had. And yeah. even beyond that, beyond their power, they were willing to give and, and believe for stuff they didn't, they didn't have, have to give to Paul. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And Those he said, so, so beyond their power, they were willing to themselves. They prayed us or they begged us. They mm -hmm. asked us. They pleaded with us with much entreaty, with a lot of begging, <laughs> that we would receive the That's gift, right. that we That's would right. receive an offering from them. Wow. Because they weren't going to receive an offering from them because they were so poor. Right. And he said, they begged, please take our offering. Isn't please, that please take our tithe. Please take our offering. He said, they begged us to receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the wow. ministering to the saints. And he said, this they did not as we hoped at first, but they gave of themselves to the Lord. Then he drops on down and goes on down uh, to, the, to the Corinthians. He says to him in verse, uh, in verse nine, he says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, that for your sakes he became poor, that through your poverty, uh, through his poverty, through Jesus' poverty, right. in other words, he came to earth as a man, right. then you might become rich. Isn't that cool? That and is and wonderful. then he goes on and says, Now now you you Corinthians, I'm gonna paraphrase this so we don't take too much time. He said, You Corinthians told me a year ago yeah. <laughs> that you were gonna Here's give. Where the scolding comes. We had a project going, a financial project going, yeah. and you Corinthians promised me yeah. you'd give. He says, A year ago. A year ago. A year ago. He says, so now for you, now, therefore, you need to perform. This is verse 11. You need to perform the doing of it. You said you'd do it. Now you need to do it. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. That, that there was a readiness of to will. So there may be a performance also out of that which you have. Wow. Now, what he's saying is. That's amazing words. The, the, the Macedonians, the Philippians. Right. Gave of, I'm going to change it from to their power, beyond their power. I'm going to change it to more our vernacular today. They they gave of the known. Right. And they gave of the, the unknown. unknown. They gave what they had, that they could see it. Here it is in my checkbook. Here it is in my pocket. I know how much I got. God says, give $100 and I got $100 or it's in mama's got it in her purse or it's under the mattress or it's in the cookie jar. It's in the bank. I know where it is. That's the known. That's right. But God says, Terry, give a $1,000. And I say, oh, I don't have a $1,000. I don't think Renee's got it. It's not in the cookie jar. It's not in the bank. Not under the mattress. But Lord, I'll give it anyway. Now I'm giving of the unknown. Yeah. So I'm giving to my power. Then I'm giving beyond my power. I'm giving yeah. of the known. I'm giving of the unknown. And see, you can give more of the unknown because there's no limit. Right. I've got more unknown than I have known. Right. Exactly. The known, I know how much I have. I can look in the right. bank and say, okay, that's how much I got. I can look in my pocket and say, that's right. how much I got. Right. But when I start dealing with the unknown, unknown, now I'm getting in God's pocket yeah, <laughs> in God's bank. And yeah. I say, okay, Lord, how much do you want me to give? Because now me and you are partners. If he that's says, here, so give, give $100 and I've got it, then yeah. that just takes obedience. Right. It takes obedient faith. 
Exactly. But if he says, Terry, give a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand, and I say, well, Lord, I don't know where I'd get that. I, I don't have it, but I'll give it. Right. Now I'm entering into a partnership with partnership. him to where it now takes creative faith. Right. It just took obedient faith to give for the known. Right. But now I'm going to have to use creative faith. Call it in. To give yeah. what he told me to give is going to have to come from him. It's He's going like, to have to be the source of that. It's kind of like saying, I'll have it by the next offering. So as he and I are partners together, <laughs> yes, yes. and I say, okay, Lord, I'll give this $1,000 or this $10,000 as you supply it. Right. I don't have it. I don't know where I'd get it. But as you supply it, as we're partners together, and you wow. supply it, then I'll give it. Now, my problem is if he supplies it and I go spend it on something else, that's uh, a problem. Yeah. But if he supplies it, which he will... And we become partners, then I go give it on our behalf, on my behalf and his behalf. Now he's going to bless that just uh, all over the map. I mean, with that's abundance. That's right. That's right. And that's what he's telling them. He's saying, listen, that church over at Philippi, even though they were in poverty, right. they gave of the known what they had and they gave of the unknown. Right. And he said, now he goes on to tell them, he says, now I'm kind of embarrassed because you guys told me you'd give a year ago and you hadn't done it. And he says, now, if, if some of these guys come with me on this trip, Paul hadn't got there yet. He's writing a letter. Right, he right. said, I'm on my way there. I'm coming there. And right. he said, but but if I get there and they find out that I've been bragging to you about them, I told you that they told me a year ago they'd give. If they get here and find out you really haven't given, he said, I'm going to really be embarrassed. And right, you are, too. Right, right. He says, so this is in chapter nine now. He said, he says, so I sent the brethren, verse three, yet I have sent the brethren ahead of me so that they, lest our boasting of you should be in vain. All my bragging I've done to you <laughs> is really in vain. So I'm sending some of the boys ahead to get the offering. So my bragging won't be in vain. My boasting won't be in vain. And he said, so you may be ready less happily if they from Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared. Well, wow. we, not to say you, should be ashamed of this same confident boasting. Verse five, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they'd go before to you and go ahead and get the money. And that's quality. You know, there's, there's a quality of life there, a quality of the level of giving. But see, as poor as they and were, they, they gave of the known. Right, that group versus And they gave of the unknown. Group. Yeah. So I've always said, you know, when people ask me to take up an offering, I'm, I've used these scriptures sometimes. Uh, I did it one time at, at, at a meeting in Florida, and Brother Copeland was sitting there. And he told me later, he said, I learned something today, Terry. I never thought of that before. But this church at Corinth, we always use it as an example and say, right. God's, God wants a cheerful giver, and he's unwilling to do it right. without a cheerful right. giver. And so if you give, then you'll, you'll have abundance. To, then, then God is able to bless you that right. you have abundance in every good work. Right. Well, but to the Philippians, Paul didn't say he, God's able to. Yeah. He said, my yeah, God shall. Shall. My God shall bless you. My God shall provide for you. My God shall yeah. supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ and Jesus. So, so we've got we've got the Corinthians where it says God's able to bless you. Right. We've got the Philippians where God said, Paul said, my God will bless you. <clears throat> and I'd rather have the my God will than the my God can. Right. <laughs> and I think the contrast that Paul is showing there in 2 Corinthians 8, going into chapter 9, that, that the real heart of the Philippian church was better prepared to give, regardless of the circumstances, sure. than the Corinthian church sure. was, even in their abundance. And the Corinthians had the money. The Corinthians had the money with no but stress. But the Philippians had the heart. Yeah. And that, that really goes to the, to the motive here of, of uh, living to give must be a quality of life. Oh, absolutely. Living to give must be a mindset. Living to give must be based on God so loved the world that he gave right. and then that he was not willing that any should perish. In other words, he doesn't want any lack. Right. He doesn't want anything to hinder you and your ability to go to the world. Exactly. And help your family. Bless your family. And one more scripture before we run out of time here. And then I wanted you to talk about that as well. Yeah. But uh, in, in verse uh, in, in verse seven, uh, he's telling them that to the Corinthians, he said, look, chapter eight, verse seven, he said, you Corinthians abound in everything. Yeah, Y'all something. abound in everything. And he said, you abound in faith. You abound in utterance, speaking. You yeah. abound in knowledge. 
and in all diligence. You abound in all diligence and in your love to us. Then he makes this powerful statement. Now see that you abound in this grace also. What grace is he talking about? The giving that the to that other that, church. that the Philippians said they that the Philippians are doing. Well, he said, you Corinthians, you abound in everything. You got the talking, you got the knowledge, you got the, all the stuff, but you need to, you need to work on this grace get of your giving. giving up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, get your raise and, your and, standard. And then, of course, in chapter yeah. nine, he goes into the, my God's able to bless yeah. you. Well, it's always about raising your standard, glory to glory, faith to faith, higher and higher. Living to give. Living to give. Everything about it is growing in grace. And, and you've the, got a new t-shirt. Yes. I'm so excited. Here it is, y'all. One that we've been promised in you. Fear and faith cannot live in the same house. That's exactly the truth. Fear yeah. and faith cannot, cannot live in the same house. That's right. Don't let hell make you afraid to believe God for your finances. Your lifestyle should be, a, as, a, as a Christian, your lifestyle should be a lifestyle of living to give. Absolutely. So don't let fear and faith live in the same house when it comes to money and believe in God. Amen. And in the meantime, we're going to tell you one more time that you are more, More than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye bye. Thank you for watching today. Renee and I always enjoy ministering to you. And one thing about the word, it works. I've always said about the, our books and tapes and products that there's no theory back there. It's 54 years of third world missionary evangelism that I know for a fact it works. You know, the COVID thing is about wrapped up, thank God, and uh, different restrictions are lifting around the world. And so uh, we're beginning to move out around the world again, which is what we've done for 54 years. And so uh, we want to invite you to partner with us, to hook up with us, to go around the world with us. You know, in our as far as teaching and training, we train missionaries, uh, we train pastors, uh, I've had pastors' conferences in country after country after country, which is something God spoke to me to do when I was just a teenager, to train ministers. And so we've done that. But we also have open-air crusades and different kind of crusades in different nations uh, with healings and miracles and salvations. So we want to invite you to be partners with us as we have partnered with other ministries all, really all of our lives. And we pray for our partners daily. We'll pray for you daily. So make it a consideration. Make it a prayer. See what the Holy Ghost says to you. And uh, we'd be glad to have you partner with us and go around the world with us. God bless you. Hello, everybody. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you.